Please excuse the gloom. Tis the witching hour, and I've been vaping. Today's episode of Mage of Sail contains imagery that some viewers may find disturbing. We have described it below in the, in the, well, in the description. Should you choose to continue, fewer beware. You're in. <coughs> oh, I gotta stop doing this. This is so bad for you. Roll the intro. They told me they were wizards, but they slit your gizzards too. They plundered our key mysteries, and all their foes did wail. Beware lest ye encounter a mighty mage of sail. Bonjour! It is I, Patrick McNamara, your best friend and the only person who truly understands you. I, uh, we are gathered here today to play Mage of Sail with Dave Allen, Holly Conrad, and Lydia Piper. Tabby couldn't make it today, uh, but we're hoping she'll be back for the next session. She's got a little bit sick. It happens. Um, so when we were last united as wizards and friends before our snack, snack, our uh, our heroes had been uh, accosted. Uh, well, firstly, I should explain where they are. Uh, they're all in a hole because there was a hole, and they all jumped in it. Mm -hmm. uh, Liga then boldly um, slid down a slip and slide. Into the further into the burrow and ended up landing in the mouth of a creature that appears to be the fabled Puer Scolopendra or baby centipede. Um, so uh, as we rejoin you, uh, Bucky and Apex are fighting each other in the the burrow and they're making quite a lot of noise as they sort of slam into the sides of it like dirt is falling down. It's not a terribly safe scenario. And a terrible creature, half baby, half centipede. Has, uh, has crawled out of this hole. You can see that it has Liga in its mouth. Ugh. Um, and is staring at you with rage. It does also have, at the, front of its, uh, at the front of its head, it does have two big centipede pincers. Ew. Uh, and it is, uh, it is thoroughly fucking enraged. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it is going to, uh, and the first thing it's going to do, as, it, as it's, you see it in its full glory, it unleashes its, uh, it, it, it basically it screams uh, because it's angry, it's hungry, it doesn't know what to do, and you are all going to roll composure plus resolve to avoid willpower damage at the terrible scream. I had to draw the pinchers on its face, but it just looked like a mustache. <laughs> I got four. Okay, that does it. Four composure okay. for thrill him. I have two. Okay. Two successes. Or Edmonton. Yeah, yeah, five, uh, six dice. Four successes. Four successes. So, um, perhaps it's the fact that you are currently inside this creature's mouth. <laughs> yeah, that that's makes it bad. like you are right next to its its terrible throat as it screams this. You take a point of willpower damage. At the the sheer awfulness of it. It is awful. Actually, let's let's roll wits plus awareness, and we'll, we'll get something uh, uh, something that looks a little bit like uh, initiative setup. I'm just gonna do those right here. Uh, three successes. One success. One this success. is my best roll in all the okay. things, so I'm good. Yeah. Just what did you three, get? Uh, one, two, three, four, eight. Eight successes. <laughs> yeah. Holy okay. Shit. So. Uh, Think about you, Wilhelm, is you're ready for anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you were definitely prepared for the day that you fought a giant centipede. <laughs> baby giant centipede. Baby giant centipede. Mm -hmm. Giant centipede baby? Giant centipede baby. I don't baby. know where the word baby goes, but it's yeah. somewhere. It's a baby centipede. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You, uh, what would you like to do? Because you have the opportunity to act first before anyone else. <clears throat> I'm, I really don't know what the best idea is, but I see the baby, and I don't have that much experience with children mm -hmm. <laughs> but so immediately i see baby i go i just need to i need to, to pacify slash r like sh get, entertain this child mm -hmm. or distract them so i immediately want to create the impression of a rattling okay. happening oh, 
I don't know where I even want this to go, yeah. honestly. So you've really got, you got it's up mostly, or down it's, your choices. Yeah, no, no, it's mostly a distraction, right? Um, so we'll, we'll say the rattling is near Buffy, Bucky Muffler and Apex where okay. they're fighting. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to create that impression. What do I need to roll? Uh, so that is going to be create an impression. It's going to be six dice. Yeah. And then include my paradox. Include your paradox dice. This is coincidental. One, two, three, four. We're four. Four. Okay. So it, it goes off. And you. So where's the rattling coming from again? Uh, oh, it's coming from Apex and Bucky. Yes. So the the baby centipede kind of draws itself up. It's distracted for a moment and it coos. And then it scuttles over on its little and its little fat arms to Bucky Muffler and Apex. Bucky Muffler looks at it and goes, "Oh gosh!" <laughs> and Apex goes, "Shit!" <laughs> and they look at each other, and they look at the baby centipede, and they both stop fighting. It's great news. Uh, so next up, Aura Edmonston, what would you like to do? <sighs> so I feel like. And you are Aura? Yes. I am Aura Aura's now, back. yes. I do remember hearing that it only got bigger because it wasn't fed. Yes. So my first thing is that we need to find some way to feed it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that means spiritual food or physical food. Okay. And so I'd like to use my occult knowledge to kind of assume like what made this creature big. Do you mean like okay. chicken soup for the soul? Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you want to use your occult knowledge to look at it. Okay. To look at it and kind of determine is what made this creature big, could I spiritually feed it? Yes. Versus physically feed it with my friends. <laughs> Give me uh, intelligence plus academics. Okay. Um, unfortunately, you don't get to use your uh, speciality in demonology for this one. because What about I have, I, occult? Oh, do you want to use occult Yeah, instead? I want to use occult, yeah. Okay, so occult, uh, yeah, intelligence plus occult, that's uh, seven Okay. Months. Cool. Don't you dare feed me. I'm already in the mouth. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. <laughs> so I'm. And you're going last. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm using my my wizard knowledge to be like, how can I fix this? All right, I got two successes, but I'd like to use a willpower okay. to get more because I want to be more successful. Hopefully, four successes. That's okay. Four successes. That's okay. great. So you you look at this. Uh, you kind of look at this creature and you try and observe you're trying to observe it for signs of occult influence essentially yeah. like has, has is magic being used on this mm -hmm. um and you can't sense anything you sense that it's under some kind of um some kind of mental Ill impulse okay um but because you don't have much access to the mind sphere you're not right. really sure what it is um but you, you can just set, kind of sense the magical remnants of it essentially okay. because you have and partly that's because you have mastery of a prime Right. Um, it, it, you would suspect that if it is hungry, that it is physically hungry rather than spiritually okay. hungry. Okay. So I know that we have to find something physical to feed it. Yes. Liga, is it now your turn? Oh, okay. I start thinking if it likes shark meat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, is there any kind of liquid coming out of where I stabbed the baby mouth. Uh, yes, there is a sort of uh, sort of eye core is coming out. Ew. It looks like it may be poisonous. That it may be poisonous. Yeah, you, it, it looks pretty. It looks pretty gross. Flashing green. Yeah. So like, uh, like, if I consume it, it's poisonous. I don't know. You try. <laughs> well, I just drink some. It's fine. Look, you 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 slid down the slip and slide. It's true. No, you're fine. You're right. Liga has been known on occasion to act incautiously around monsters. Yes. You're not wrong. Um, okay, so I'm assuming there are like cells mm -hmm. in here. Great. I'm gonna turn all of the air in the cells into bees. Into bees. <laughs> no, not more bees. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. no, no, never mind. Never mind. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is it's like it's like putting down your chest piece and taking your hand off it. <laughs> Once you say bees, Damn that's it. it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, that's it. You're set on yeah, bees. Once you said bees, you're set on okay, bees. Okay, so Damn you're it. gonna try and turn that. Oh, so that's that's pretty difficult magic. It's bee time. That's why I was like, wait a yeah, minute, yeah, never mind. Let's, let's let's roll. That's gonna be six dice. Let's roll your four paradox. Yeah, it's, it's buzzing time. Uh, it's your, buzzing time. Yeah, your standard. Your difficulty is um, 
I'm gonna turn all the air in the room into bees. Let's do this. Well, all the air inside, like the mouth of the creature, yeah. right? Yeah. I have um, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the effect goes off. I have a question. Mm -hmm. The par there's one paradox crit. Oh, there is. Oh, like, yeah, one like is fine. One, but in, and there's a crit there's on two? The, and a normal. Oh no, that's a paradox. Does that crit. count as a paradox yeah. crit? Uh -oh. as long as I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. To, I didn't mean so you. <laughs> you can re-roll the non-paradox dice with willpower if you want to avoid the paradox crit. No, let's do paradox. Oh, you can do a paradox crit. Oh, might cool, as, yeah. Might as well. I, I honestly don't know what kind of paradox crit I could pick for this that would be worse than the effect just going off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Truly? You, you tell me. Um, you so, tell us. Us corpses <laughs> down here. Yeah. So like, I'm in the mouth where this is happening, so I'm not convinced that I'm going to survive. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Oh my god, I'm um, sorry that I so made you, this you kind of This is a half, kind of half of a matter, half of a life effect. So you, you do scroll a, uh, you scroll a glyph somewhere into the sort of goo on this creature's tongue. And while you're doing that, you tickle it, and it sort of bucks you out of its mouth. I hate all of this. Um, and then it... So you're not quite sure, like, did this spell go off? Did it not go off? And then you feel reality sort of punch you in the face at what you've tried to do. Like, you actually feel the backlash. It is like reality coming around and says, no, this is not possible. Um, and then the baby centipede stops and sort of coughs and then goes, <laughs> and bees shoot out oh of its mouth. <laughs> You armed this centipede. I'm so sorry. I okay. wanted to As take you, it back. You, you edit the you alter this simple life form so that it you so that it has the ability to shoot bees okay. out sure. of its mouth. I'm just not gonna do anything. <laughs> That's fine. This is fine. Yeah, uh, fine. there is now there are now every time this creature like so the the sad thing fine. about it is that it's not really breathing anymore. So it's sort of choking, but every time it tries to breathe out, just another, it like vomits a huge vomits bees. amount of bees out at you. You are now all surrounded by bees. Um, <laughs> this is a bad time to say I hate bees. <laughs> well, I, I feel like, every, yeah, everyone's getting a little a little bit of horror in this album. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't like bees. Uh, bees aren't actually like violent unless you like piss them off. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you're not wrong, but I still don't want to... Like yeah. yell at them in a dark tunnel. <laughs> Where they can't really well, see. Well, you so, yeah. turn their face into more bees. Yeah. So every turn that you guys end in the bees, you're going to take a point of superficial health damage. I'm okay. so sorry. So okay. Bucky Muffler, when he sees what is going on, uh, with admirable sang yeah, uh, he grabs Saoirse and fastball specials her out of the hole. And that's really cool. Do you have a crush on her or something? Like why? Like I we mean, could be saved. To, he's trying to save her life. We sure. could also be saved. With we're I mean, also in trouble. I mean, <laughs> gosh, no! I, I meant no impropriety at all. I just, I just felt that she was the. It's coming out of this massive. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> then no, that's fine. You know, reap what you sow and all that. Bye. <laughs> you just tried to kill me. That's true. I just, I'm not judging. Um. So he successfully throws Sisha out of the hall. Um, and Apex looks around and goes, Co-captains, would this be an appropriate moment for a huddle? No, what? <laughs> I am unclear as to what situation. Is this, was this all deliberate? Is this part of a party? Huddle, yes. <laughs> sure. And where, where are we? <laughs> so you guys are, you are all sort of, you, you and Aura didn't move terribly far yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, you're and, right and, underneath the And Liga just got exit. spit out of the yeah. mouth? Liga just got spit out. Yeah. Okay, so we'll assume she spit out yeah. close to the huddle. Yeah, and Apex says, uh, hello world. Well, the baby centipede is distracted for a moment, sort of coughing and yeah. trying, to, trying to breathe, essentially. Uh, he says, uh, hello, co-captains. Uh, I am unfamiliar with the creature we are fighting. Seems to have bad vibes. <laughs> you are correct, Apex. Yeah. Um, this is the the faded baby centipede we were warned about um, upstairs. Oh. You know, there's no upstairs. It's very large. It's it's so big, <clears throat> and uh, childlike. Yes. And, uh, we need to deal with that 
before anything else. I see, yes. We will devour Bucky Muffler after the baby centipede is dispatched with. Yes, that's a perfect time for what? that. What for now, mean? we focus on the baby centipede. Okay. And somehow, like, uh, bees just started coming out of it? Yes, <laughs> most, most mysterious. Yes, we all know where the bees came from. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, like, specifically look at you. Yeah, just very... sure doesn't. He goes, yes, yeah, so he no idea. Yes, we know. We know where the bees came from. Just like we know where the tentacles come from, we know where the bees come from. We're all very sold on this. Yeah, it just came from its blood. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so Apex then decides he's going to use the rest of his turn to fight the baby centipede. Uh, good. We all encourage, I mean, I personally encourage him to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I say, whoa! Uh, so actually, he's in, he's in Wereshark form. So many dice for Wereshark form. Yeah, Wereshark form. He's kind of, well, all creatures from Werewolf are heavily min-maxed towards combat. Mm -hmm. Three, six, seven, oh, seven successes. Have fun, baby centipede. Um, so the baby centipede is distracted, um, and as it... it Apex jumps at it and it reaches out with the two of its its little baby hands and grabs him and holds him right in front of its face, at which point he just starts punching it. He's just punching Fair. this baby. He cares nothing for human babies. He takes no dice penalty for sympathy. And he, just starts, <laughs> he just starts punching it and it's choking and choking and getting punched and punched. And then it kind of throws him across the room. But it's taken pretty serious damage. This baby is bruised and beaten. This, this baby. Yes. Uh, and uh, at the beginning of the next turn, once again, it lets out its terrible scream. Yes. And it's going to attack Apex because, you know, it kind of makes sense that it would attack Apex, right? He's attacking it. Okay, so the baby centipede grabs. Uh, it's able to get up to, up to Apex, grab him, and start giving him an incredibly vicious gummy. <laughs> he has his whole hammerhead shark head in his mouth, and it's just hmm, 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 trying desperately to do something to it. However, by accident, during the gumming process, as it tries to grab onto it more, it gets its mandibles and digs in hard to his side. So it looks like he got he got relatively badly hurt for oh, no. out of this. Wilhelm, what would you like to do? Okay, can you remind me about the fact that what happens if this creature is fed? Uh, so the 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 it's a bit implication that you got from Doctor the sinister Doctor Flesh yeah. was that the creature becomes larger when it's being starved. Okay. So when it's fed, it may get smaller. It may be pacified in some way. You yeah. can definitely feel thought, the main emotion you, coming off of this thing is just hunger and fear. Did you? I thought you mentioned that it like it if it's. All right, so if it's not fed, it, it grows. Yes. There's no like pain element if it is fed, right? Uh, so we say that one of the it, things it, that it he said, if it, he it, said in his speech that he had uh, he had modified it so that it, it caused it pain to okay. eat. So it it is it is not able to eat under its own power. Was okay. What was implied by sinister Doctor Flesh? Okay. Is so he the jerk? Some, something is preventing it from doing that. Ugh. So <clears throat> so you would have to. So being the size I am. Yeah. I think that I probably have protein snacks on me. Yeah, you in the form have. of a jerky or so. Just you know, you need your macronutrients to be correct. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would love to form an empathic bond with this creature and then just chow down. And just try. So just you try, want it to feel like it's it, exactly like it's like it's being satiated by food. Okay, absolutely. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Let's uh, give that a go then. That's that's six dice. And that's one paradox, or is that no? Because includes no. Your, includes yeah, it's your paradox because you're doing an empathic bond. Yes. Uh, your difficulty is two. We just got two, so okay, you got two successes. You you try and reach out and understand this creature. You don't have a tremendous amount of experience with children, but you know you you have your sort of basic human instincts. Uh, you sense that it's hungry, and you let it feel what you feel, and you feel what it feels, and you feel like just. The, the absolute pain that hits your stomach. Mm -hmm. It almost knocks you off your feet. Like you, you start to find it hard to stand. Mm -hmm. You're so hungry all of a sudden. So you grab all of your jerky that you bought with you that day. Um, so that you can, because you need to eat every couple of hours to- You understand, yeah. refeeding. Yeah. Uh, you, and you just start snacking down- Yeah, I mentioned I- On I, jerky. I am so hungry yeah. now. 
So give me a, uh, here's the thing, it's very difficult to eat jerky because it's quite, it's quite tough. So oh wow, okay. So give me a... So this is a roll against yeah, beef jerky? Yeah, give me a... Cool. <laughs> okay. Give me a strength... All right. And strength and resolve roll to eat this jerky as fast as you possibly can. Just stuffing jerky into your maw. Chewing and chewing. You can use some of the goo in your mouth it's to like three moisturize. In it's three. three. Okay, three does it. It's a roll to eat jerky. Yeah, I understand so, that. Yeah. You made it sound like really tough jerky. Yeah, this this jerky is tough, but you know what? You're tougher. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Um, so you and you start to get this jerky, and the the baby centipede looks like it. It doesn't really know what it's experiencing. It still feels hungry, but it, it like it doesn't have that feeling in its stomach anymore. But it feels the feeling of fullness coming from you, and it it sort of and it 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 stops doing what it was doing, and it, it wanders up towards you, and it. It sort of reaches out towards you with its many arms, as though it's looking for comfort now that it's been fed. And the but the empathic bond is only going to really last for this turn, after which it's going to be potentially going to be hungry again. Yeah, it would be hard for me to not um, if if this if this is reaching out for me and, and I'm trying to encourage it, and we are sharing. Uh, empathy. Yeah, I would probably reach out and grab yeah. one of the weird baby hands. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> You, uh, you, we do this. Yeah, you reach out and grab one of those little baby hands. And from the empathic bond, you feel just everything that it feels. It feels hungry. It feels alone. It feels scared. It feels like... And there's part of you where it feels like it's away from family. Uh, there's a, like a real strong feeling on it, that it's that mainly that it's alone. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so and it, and it has, for the moment, it's sort of stopped fighting. Uh, so next up, Aura Edmonston, what would you like to do for your turn? Well, this is sad. It seems to be away from family. Well, all you know is that I'm holding hands with the okay. baby Okay, I mean, that's yeah. weird, and I don't like this. And totally. it seems it's to be calming it down, and I feel up. very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Aura Edmonston doesn't like babies yes. at all. So uh, she's like, mm-mm. And uh, I feel like, but seeing it calm down... And seeing that empathy sort of mm -hmm. exposed, I'm gonna try and talk to it spiritually. Okay. So yeah. I will try and and go into this like spirit site and spirit realm and see if I can speak to its spirit. Okay. I assume babies have no spirit, but you've shown me. Yeah, that they well, do. yeah. Like obviously, like most babies. <laughs> they get around age seven. Yeah. Usually. You know, I I come from you know I, I grew up in Britain where babies of course don't have souls. Yes. So it would be difficult to to talk to them there, but thankfully. Uh, yeah. This is uh, this is not a British baby. No. Um, so you you see it and you you see its kind of spirit around it, and it is uh, it's a, it, indeed the spirit of sort of, of baby centipedes. Okay. Is there, and uh, it doesn't know how to talk, but it mm -hmm. just it just kind of it just kind of cries pitifully for you because in the spirit world it's just it's even sadder. And mm. it, it, it it sort of says to you, why. Stephen, can you take care of a child? Um, <laughs> My parent. Uh, uh, goodness, uh, Aura Edmonston, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I've ever looked after a, a human child, let alone one that's also a centipede. Well, can you go over there and just give it a snuggle? Um, what if it the 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 spirit of the baby yes, centipede? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't want to do it. Aura <laughs> uh, doesn't want to do it. She's I like, mean, surely, Aura. Wouldn't it? Because Stephen doesn't want to do it. <laughs> no, no, neither of us. Or, uh, surely, what uh, what a baby needs is is it, it it doesn't. Some would suggest it does not need to be snuggled by a bird, but rather a a, a human. Well, when I was young, Stephen, I loved snuggling birds, and that comforted me. I see. Yes. But I'm guessing that that was an anomaly. So please just don't tell anyone about this. Okay. You it, I will try to walk up to the baby, but like she's so awkward. <laughs> and I'm like, she's like trying to picture it as like a rare book. Yeah. <laughs> like how she would treat a rare book. In your book. mind's eye, just okay. <laughs> or it's just like rare book, rare book, gentle hands, rare book. That's what she's saying as yeah, she's okay. picking this baby up. And so you go up and you 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 sort of because yes. you can't really pick it up, but you can mm -hmm. sort of there there rare book. Rare book. <laughs> Okay. Gentle hands on the rare book. And the baby centipede continues to be calm. Ugh. Liga. Oh no. 
what would you this like? This scene is so upsetting. Yeah. The whole scene is upsetting. She's probably saying, why? Because his mouth is made of bees. Can you turn that off? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would like to turn that off, actually. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really turn it off because it's a paradox crit. It's completely out of your control now. So every time, and every time this thing, like, even as it's, even as it's there, you, so you, you kind of sense Liga, you, you have a lot of experience with, uh, with creatures of all kinds. Um, and also you did this to it. You <laughs> sense that the baby centipede is probably dying from, from the not being able to breathe. Now I'm a jerk. Oh my god. Killing this giant creature. Um, it did attack us, but you, know. you were in its mouth. I was with the mouth. And it did try to gum you. Yeah. Um, I would like to turn at least one of the bees into a queen, so at least they all huddle towards the queen. Oh, that's fucking great. Okay. All right. So you. What? <laughs> just, that's, that's just. Isn't that's it? just such like, a good idea. It's a good idea. Can you, idea. Can you it's guess a good idea. about how the combat's going to go ever? <laughs> yeah, no, I have absolutely no idea. Okay. Yeah. It's, I'm uh, making my mission. <laughs> it's, um, so go ahead and roll that. That's changing a, a trans, uh, is that transforming symbol? I'm going to say it's altering a simple life form. Um, to change one of the bees into a queen. Yeah, that feels right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. That's a paradox crit, though. Yeah, it's paradox crit. So that's a. Oh, actually, no, you don't have any paradox. You discharged it. So oh, it's a, it's oh, a regular crit. Oh, it goes, oh, yeah. it goes yeah, away. It goes away if you get a yeah. crit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's normal. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Thankfully. So you just, Thank got, a, God. You just got a normal crit. Okay. So, so that, that is uh, six then. Six successes. Okay. So you're able to. Uh, um, so I mean, that's a, that's a survival effect. So Lord knows what you did. Okay. Here's, <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say you did. You actually, um, you, you, you had to get into the kind of the, the primal essence of survival. And what you did is you, you cut your palm. I love doing that. I love blood magic. Yeah, and, uh, a, and a bee comes and, and sort of feeds on it, essentially. Um, and that bee then becomes a queen uh, and flies away. And all of the other bees start to be like, oh, yeah, that bee's looking... That bee was looking normal a minute ago, and now it's now it's looking pretty good. So they all start. All of the bees start to sort of follow it away and draw away. So the baby centipede continues to <coughs> cough, uh, and bees are coming out. But it seems like the stream of bees has sort of stopped, and all of the bees are now like, okay, we've got to do what the queen says. Queen presumably tells it stop building the hive. Let's look at stuff. Don't worry about all the stuff that's going on here. It's not relevant to us. We're bees. <laughs> Um, so you have successfully sort of mended this situation, and the baby centipede now feels it feels calm. Rare look. It's still hungry. <laughs> uh, it's still hungry, but it's it's ready to go now. And as you lie there, kind of cradling it, the ba the baby centipede calmly just its ragged breathing slows and stops. And then you hear from the tunnel. <coughs> and then you hear dozens, hundreds of other voices. <coughs> At the death of the baby, baby centipede. And then, the actual baby centipede bursts through the ground around you, carrying you up through the hole, and you are all within its mouth as it raises you up burst through the roof of the circus and just screams. It's terrible scream. So the baby centipede... Eat your siblings, stupid! Baby centipede, <laughs> very, very similar in appearance to a baby baby centipede. Okay. God damn. Did you just make this up? <laughs> this is just me. This, this is on my notes. He's been thinking about this since April. This is not his notes. He's been thinking about this since April. 
the main differences between a baby centipede and a baby a baby baby centipede is the baby centipede is um, uh, sort of uh, well. Have you ever seen like Mothra? Yeah. We're talking around that sort of size, and each segment of the baby centipede, of which there seems to be maybe about a hundred, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, is made up of a baby baby centipede. Okay. They're all joined together. And there is immediate, you can hear from outside, absolute pandemonium as this thing bursts and unleashes itself through into the flesh circus. Uh, you are currently, Liga, this is actually kind of a familiar situation for you, so you might be able to bring everyone up to speed. Uh, you are within the mouth of the front head mm-hmm. of the baby centipede. Um, and it is, at the moment, it's just screaming. So I'm going to need everyone to give me another willpower roll, which is resolve plus composure, just to not sort of flop in terror. I'd start talking to Steven saying, this is why I never wanted to be a mother. <laughs> Steven just said, no, I agree, Aura. <laughs> this, the, the nature of babies is sinister. I agree. I have four. You got four? You're fine. I have three. Three? You're also fine. I got one. You got one success, so you take two points of willpower damage. But hey, you know what? You guys don't have to worry about the damage over time from the bees anymore. That's true. Yeah. That was self-inflicted. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as you stand here in the mouth of this baby centipede, what would you guys like to do? I didn't know it was a mini-boss. We used to have a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we had a paradox crit on the mini-boss. Anyone got any plants? So we are officially above ground. Mm-hmm. Outside. You are above ground, you are outside. You can actually see the golden isle outside of the mouth of this creature. Baby centipede. Yeah. Uh, you can also see people now like... The, screaming, right? Yeah, the centipede is... The, the circus itself is kind of in, in rags because you've just gone... The baby centipede has gone straight through the tent. Yeah. And people are now screaming. Um, because firstly, I think they probably just about discovered the giant murder scene in the other su- in the other side of the circus, and then the baby centipede has emerged. Is it difficult to get much of a sense of the baby centipede as you are currently within its more? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, you can definitely see that things are people are screaming, and uh, you even hear like the sounds of small arm fire as people sort of try and shoot it. Could I potentially? Um... And, the, and this is because I've not used this quite yet. Now, open gate, is yes. that for multiple people? Or is that's that just, just me? That only works on you at this level. That's yeah. rude, so I you, feel. That's rude. <laughs> you, you can teleport out, yeah. Bye. Bye, Malama. <laughs> See you later. Have a good life. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> like, okay, guys. I'm going to go and get help. Yeah. It's, a, it's definitely a later losers kind of scenario. <laughs> Now, you have called this being a simple life form a few times. Yes. Um, now it's a very, very large, yeah, simple Yeah, it's a large, form. simple life form. And this is mostly like, um, we're playing in space, really. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was trying to figure out how to get my friends out of here. And since it is a baby, mm-hmm. human baby appearance, I'm assuming that its DNA is similar to where if it had like a tetanus base infection, it could potentially get locked jaw and have it, its jaw locked okay. open. Yeah. And I, I think I want to try to alter the this life form to be infected with... With tetanus? With tetanus in order so to get... So it can't close its jaw? Exactly. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's do it. So that is... Uh, this is pseudoscience, by the way. Yeah. It's... Um, yeah, uh, so, so that, is that transport? That's so you are alter. you are altering a simple life vi- form. viruses and bacteria and stuff around it. Yeah, um, to give it like severe and, and effectively uh, yeah uh, to give it tetanus tetanus, but like a uh, late stage, I guess. Yeah, because that doesn't happen. Okay, so because uh, they're such a big creature, I think you're going to need to get how much paradox have you got? I just have one. You just have one. Yeah. I'm going to say you either need um, five. Power, uh, you either need five successes, or you're going to need to add two extra paradox dice. Add the two paradox. Okay. I got three on that. 
You got three? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, three, that's, 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 that's with, actually what that's you need. You the got the paradox. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, you... <laughs> what ancient Akashayana technique you are using is, is, is perhaps beyond me, but there was, you, you remember your original mentor, Wilhelm, telling you of a, a similar situation that he was in. Mm -hmm. where, in the mouth of a beast. Yeah, he found uh, himself unable to defeat a beast in combat, and he, so he gave it an, an infection, um, and it was managed to lay it low. And you think you can recall the precise movement that he used. It's quite difficult to do it while you're kind of on the tongue of a giant baby. <laughs> but you do manage it. And you reach out to all of the different bacteria and viruses and the various terrible things that exist in the ecosystem of this creature's mouth. And you feel it start to sort of seize up and... You, and, and its movements of its, of its mouth become labored, and then the jaw kind of sort of lolls open. At which point the centipede, which was sort of standing upright, mm -hmm. smashes down. And you are now like, so the baby centipede is about 20 foot tall. Uh, sorry, the baby centipede, when it's straight down, is about 20 foot tall. So you're now within jumping range of the ground if you wanted to get out of it. Um, you might have to figure out how you're going to jump out without hurting yourself. Um, but it's not like going to be an instant splat. Mm -hmm. um, Aura, it is now your turn. You are you are now as close to the ground as you have been in the last several seconds. Yes, I would love to crawl out to the ground and yeah. just get away from this thing. Okay. Like, I just... You're going to just jump out of the mouth while you have yeah. the chance? Yes. Okay, so you will take quite a lot of damage if you just if you just jump down because it's fairly high. Um, would you like to do anything to sort of soften your landing? Um, can Steven... Hold me. Uh, Steven's a spirit. He doesn't have physical form. <laughs> and even if he did, he's a parrot. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I do like asking him to do extreme things. Yeah. Because it makes me laugh. Um, oh my God. Yeah, there's nothing I can really do to fall softer. Uh, you have forces. I do have forces. Okay, I do have forces. Yes. I guess I could get the wind to kind of cushion me. Yeah, you can get the yeah. wind. You also have control over gravity. That's and... true. All right, I'll use the I'll use like gravity to slow myself okay. down. Okay. So that's going to be how many paradox do you have right now? I don't have any right oh, now. Oh, must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Four successes. No, that's a that was a crit, which oh, counts as crit. which counts as four, right? Uh, so yeah. it's six. Yeah. Six successes. Yeah. Okay, six successes. Excellent. So uh, what you do looks fucking rad. Okay, cool. It's important. Yes. Uh, six successes. Well, the main thing like about Doctor it. Strange. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I'm actually going to say that for six successes, you could also um, uh, you could also slow down Liga if you want. Oh, absolutely, I will. Yeah. If, if Liga is willing to jump out with you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the two of you jump out at the same time, and uh, you you hold your staff. Yeah. Um, That's and. Awesome. And a it's kind super of cool. yeah, summer. For up, once, <laughs> I don't look like a mess. Yeah, yeah, you just you look kind of like if Storm had a super yeah. cool staff. Yeah, like your hair is blowing. Yeah, yeah, like the white eyes. Yeah, and you That's you sick. land every, and there's a lot of fucking people around too. Yeah. So oh, a lot of cool. people <laughs> see you looking cool. Oh man, uh, I feel them, good about this. Yeah, it's not going to be the main thing they remember about today. But it, it well, feels good. jealous. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Today was a bad day, I understand, yeah. but it feels good. <laughs> so you managed to make it uh, you managed to make it to the ground and see the the Poila yeah. Scolopendra yeah. And I say, you... do you know what happens to a baby centipede? <laughs> <laughs> when it gets struck, when it gets struck by, by lightning. lightning. Same thing happens to everything. Yeah. All right. So the condition of that is you now have to use your next turn trying to electrocute I, the I, baby I... centipede with a bolt of lightning. So sorry. It's okay. Uh, we all laugh. It's okay. Yeah, we all enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Liga, what would you like to do now? You are you're now on the ground safely. What bee related thing would you yeah. do, with Liga? <laughs> All right. Um, and the centipede is just unconscious, right? Uh, or so just like locked. The, 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 the it's just locked jawed. It just its mouth is sort of lolling open. It doesn't seem like it can close it. Okay. Is it still doing anything? I mean, it's distressed uh, about that because it. All of a sudden, can't yeah, use its jaw. It, so the baby centipede is currently it's it's screaming as loud as it can. Its scream is clearly just absolutely wrecking a lot of the people around it. Like a lot of the crowd are unable to sort of escape because all they can do is cover their ears to try and stop it. But it is uh, it is it is now flattened out. It is uh, it has all of its little baby arm legs on the ground, 
Um, but it is it is absolutely colossal. You realize like this is a kaiju sized creature. Um, and it is it is sort of thrashing its front legs and, and smashing them on the ground, um, causing uh, some geological distress. Hmm. But it doesn't seem to be actively attacking anyone at the moment. Are the bees still around somewhere? Uh, the bees are probably still in the hole. They're now building a little hive. <laughs> oh, chilling. There. Yeah. yeah. They're just chilling. It's all right. They've had a weird day, but whatever. <laughs> well, because like I want to feed it, and it yeah. eats bugs. Yeah. I still have my bee arm. Yeah. Do you want to just sh you want to shoot some bees at it? Some good protein. I want to shoot my bee arm at it. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Because the open mouth and then like it goes into yeah, its it tummy and it eats can't. food. Can't. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. I don't think you have any way of controlling these bees, really. That's a good point. Because you don't have you don't have mind. So you these bees are mostly like the the nicest thing they do for you is stay in the form of an arm. You can use lemongrass oil to convince them to fo like they'll follow lemongrass oil as if it was a queen what okay. would i actually i don't know if <laughs> right, i don't so know if roll i know me this, intelligence so plus, <laughs> roll me intelligence plus survival because that's something I hope that, this is true that's it's a, true that's a trick that liga might actually know yeah but I'm gonna that's check. cool intelligence plus survival i'm i'm just throwing out weird things i you're like <laughs> that dashing lemongrass oil, and I'm just like the powers of the arcane. <laughs> next I'm year. burning sage, <laughs> just in case. No, it's a very like all the different versions of magic are all having yeah. their moment right now. That's the <laughs> joy of mage. Uh, I have. It looks like at least four. Four. Four successes. Yeah, you for sure know that this works. Um, yeah, you you remember uh, Mother Vesvaldus. Teaching you this back in the day, back in your back, back in your village, she taught you because uh, she kept bees, and you helped out with them sometimes. That's why you uh, love bees. Yeah, which is uh, where you that's where you got this fixation. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so where where? But now you're going to have to do something to turn something in. You don't just have lemongrass with you. I'm not going to go that like. Oh yeah, I'll just bring that out. But you can you can use an effect to make some. Yeah, I'm going to use the centipede goo. Okay. Oh, the, the ones the you scraped you up. Took, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, and you can turn that into lemongrass. Okay. Lemongrass oil. Lemongrass oil. Um, go ahead and roll that. That's going to be six dice. That is a simple transmutation, so you need to get two successes. It's not much. Uh, there's not a ter tremendous amount of it there, so. I have the re roll. That is worth the re roll. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to use a willpower to how many do I roll? Uh, you reroll up to three. Yeah, three. There All right, three successes. Three successes. Okay, so you do it. You uh, you follow precisely this uh, this glyph that you were taught um, back in your village, and this sort of goo that you have. I'm going to say you put the goo into like a container. Or yeah, a it's like or in something. a pouch. Yeah, in a pouch. Um, because it's this lovely smell of lemongrass oil, you know, you could you could uh, you could perhaps bake with this, but it's uh, or cook with it, perhaps. I don't think it'd make a very nice cake. Um, uh, what would you now like to do? Actually, that's your turn. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, your yeah, your your turn is that you uh, you did this effect. Wilhelm, uh, you are still in the mouth of the baby centipede. Okay. Um, it's less of a problem for you because you can kind of get out. When yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I do want to try to make a. In. So how far how far off the ground is the say the head of this centipede? It's about twenty foot off the ground when it's lying down. <clears throat> when it's it, lying down, it's twenty when foot it's, off the ground. Yeah, it's 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 huge. That is so upsetting. Yeah, when it's, and when he, when he first started, I need to it, mentally adjust the when scale. He, when it first started, it was reared up, and you were hundreds of oh feet off god. the ground. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, I have the athletics to jump out of there. Do a successful parkour tuck and roll. Yeah, that, that is that is uh, obviously the safe play, but I don't know if I'm going to do that per se. You might actually like. There, there's an argument to be made that you are more useful in the baby centipede's mouth. At the <laughs> I don't know if it's God. in the mouth, but I do think that I want to. I want to exit the mouth because that seems like a bad time overall. Okay. And I think I want to ride the. Uh, I, I think I want to like grab the the upper the. Upper mandibles or okay, whatever, yeah. and kind of flip up to be on top of the okay, absolutely head, the forehead of this. Beast. So that would be a dexterity plus athletic plus athletic roll. Okay. If you wanted to juice it with magic, you could increase your dexterity ability using a level three effect. I mean, I'm pretty 
I'm pretty spry, right? Okay, you want to just go for I'm it? I'm just going to go for it. It's three. Three successes. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty difficult what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. It might be worth re-rolling to see if you can get a little okay. bit more. I'm going to leave three and re-roll two then. Okay. All right, we got, got, we got, we got, five we, got we got both. Yeah. Okay, that's what you needed because this is a very, this is a very difficult and impressive yeah, thing I, to do. I agree. Uh, it is perhaps because you just saw Aura doing something very cool. Then saying a really bad line. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. I like that line. I remember. No. Thinking, I, I, like, I don't like that guy who wrote it, but no, I like, no. I like that's the. Fair. Uh, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, You're wrong, but. <laughs> What I don't like is that he says, oh, yeah, because well, Halle Berry delivered it wrong. It's like, no, it didn't. No, he did. Off. She did great. No, no, like, she she did. did the best she could with that she line. She did, yeah. Oscar winner. And oh, Toad is Darth Maul. Maul. Let's not forget Toad is Darth Maul. Yeah. That's yeah. important. So you, perhaps because you just saw Aura doing something so cool, you, you're sort of inspired. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, so you want to get on top of the baby centipede sort of head. Yes. Okay. So you, uh, you start climbing out. You manage to, you, you jump off kick off of a mandible, grab onto the sort of top of the cheek of the baby centipede, which thankfully it's got little fat chubby cheeks. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, Pull like yourself up soft. like you're going Ooh. on a salmon ladder, grab onto a little bit of fluffy eyebrow, and manage to sort of shadow the colossus your way up to the top of the baby centipede. Okay, thank you, yes. One of the things you see on top of the baby centipede is that around its skull... Oh my god, because it has a soft chin. There is, uh, which is very, very soft. Yeah, you, it's very sort of, uh, it's sort of spongy under Yeah, that's oh way more gross than, <laughs> like, a, like you're trying out a mattress, but it's a yeah. baby's head. I'm yeah, so but sad. it's like a 40 foot baby's head. And it's, uh, on it, you can actually see there's some kind of uh, metallic device has oh. been implanted into the baby centipede's skull. Wow. Okay. It has, it has, and it's like, it looks, it looks pretty serious. Like it looks like a really serious bit of kit. Uh, you've only seen this kind of stuff done previously by technocrats. This isn't something that a a normal human scientist could do. Like they're just the 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 humanity does not have the ability to do this. Okay. Um, so yeah, there there is some kind of sort of device or sort of skull cap made of metal uh, over part of the baby centipede's head. <coughs> when is my turnover? Uh, your turn is over now. Okay. Thank you for that information. Okay. Or well, Edmondson, it is now your turn. Well, I just landed all super cool. Um, I guess I... You hear I, me say, nice! <laughs> <laughs> on top of that head. Probably don't hear you. It's so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I said it. Oh, that, thank you. I felt it. I do feel like one of my, my tenets is don't harm the innocent. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like I can't... Now that I know that this is just a baby, yeah. from interacting with the other baby, I've already killed one baby today, so I feel mm. like... Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I'm going to try and talk to this thing's spirit as well. Okay. So... So you're going to talk to the spirit of the, the baby centipede? Yes. Okay. So you have a couple of, you have a couple of things you can do in, in terms of uh, spirits, is you can talk to spirits that are already there. Yeah, I can you also, also touch the, spirit. Yes, touching a spirit means you can interact with it in some way right. for one turn. You can also summon spirits, so you can bring a spirit to you. That mm -hmm. can be anything from a, you know, a ghost or a wraith. It could be an angel or a demon. Right. Um, you have a lot of uh, possibilities there. Um, what would, so would you like, are you just going to use a spirit site to see if there is a spirit of the baby centipede yeah, around? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't seem like the spirit, the, the baby centipede is sort of spiritually active. Okay. It's in such a strange uh, situation. Like, this isn't how, this doesn't happen to baby centipedes mm -hmm. in the wild because they just eat. Yeah. Um, the, but you do see the towering above it, the spirit of kaijus. Oh. Uh, and it looks fucking thrilled. It is having the best time. Okay. It is watching. You also see. So it's like Pacific Rim style kaiju. I am yeah, super up there. fan of yeah. Pacific Rim. Yeah. You also see uh, a sort of collection of ghosts. Uh, you don't you don't recognize them as they're not like they're not the spirits of the recently dead or anything, mm. but they're sort of. Just cowled figures hmm. with no visible faces watching with keen interest. Oh, I'd like to talk to them. Oh, hello! Excuse me! 
<laughs> okay, so... Excuse me, a uh, cowled figure is usually a bad sign. Hello? Okay, so with this person, they, they look at you and go, Aura Edmonston, you're, you're speaking to us. Yes, and of course. We're, we're delighted by what's happening in the, this adventure. Who are you? Oh, we're the connoisseurs. Uh, yeah, of what? Of, you know, of entertainment. We seek out the very best things and so the most interesting adventures and watch them. I don't like that. Oh, well, I mean... I mean, you're part of what the Hermetic Order? No, we're just... We're just spirits, just like any other spirit. But we spend our time being entertained by the adventures of people like you. We're hmm. very excited by the baby centipede. It seems like a really good adventure. We're interested in knowing what's going to happen. Perhaps it will destroy Hammerhead Bay. But we don't want that to happen. Oh, well, I mean, you're the heroes. I'm sure you'll strive to ruin it. Oh, I it. wouldn't say that. It's not, you know, we're a bit of a mistake. We're not heroes, you know. Oh, well, you're, you're too modest, Aura Edmonston. Uh, what, what would you seek of us? We've we're really already just... killed one baby today, so. <laughs> we're really just here to observe. Uh, I mean, we could help, but we would, of course, extract an oath. Oh, I mean, what sort of oath do you think you would extract? Well, here's the thing about us, Aura Edmonston. Mm. We have a particular interest that we believe you could help us with. And that is? It's Big Paul yeah, and yes. Nigel Aura. Oh, we do love them. We ship them. Oh. <laughs> and we will burden our souls. <laughs> I can't believe it. With those secrets. And Aura just goes, I ship them as well. <laughs> Next time on Mage of Sail. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you are enjoying the show, you could also consider uh, pledging to us on Patreon, where it's for low as $3 a month, you could have early access. You could have watched this on Wednesday if you wanted to. And uh, it really helps, out, uh, helps, helps us keep making the show. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. A wizard's life for me we sailed the mighty ocean to find the traitor sea. Bones, bones, bones. A wizard's life for me. We found the isles unconquered as they should ever be. Bones, bones, bones. A wizard's life for me. We sailed the mighty ocean to find the traitor sea. Bones, 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 a wizard's life for me. We found the isles unconquered as they should ever be.